Hello and welcome to this Union Solidarity International weekly update. My name is Walton Pantland and with me is Andrew Brady. This week we're going to talk about ongoing industrial action in Greece, an update from India, further industrial action in Spain, uh, the Brazilian metal workers CNM, the transport union TSSA and a recent web conference we had with Steve Keane, Professor of Economics at the University of Western Sydney. Andrew, would you like to tell us about the conversation we've been having with the Brazilian metal workers? Yes, I'd be delighted to, Walton. As of this week, USI was delighted to hear from the CNM, CUT, Metal Workers of Brazil, a one million strong union, of their endorsement of Union Solidarity International, a really important step for our initiative about building cross-continent dialogue and exchange of communication, ideas and information. So it was a real shot in the arm for our project and just shows that trade unions and trade unionists across our world see the potential of our project, which is really exciting for us to be endorsed by such a famous trade union. And indeed, just a couple of hours ago, we've had a web conference with them about how we can put in place a programme of work that consolidates that dialogue and that solidarity between us and then we can have specific work about sectoral issues but also about how we can learn from each other and develop best practice so really heartening for us to hear that and we've been featuring a number of articles already in both English and Portuguese about some of the fantastic work that our brothers and sisters in Brazil are doing. Thanks, Andrew. It's Olympic season in London and Transport Workers Union, the TSSA, have produced a union smartphone app. It's an Olympic survival kit and it's pretty impressive. It helps visitors to London find their way around the city, but it also links them into campaigns for public transport and uh, against uh, climate change. So I think very well done to the TSSA. That's a, it's an excellent um, app that they've produced and it's a really innovative way of reaching out to the travelling public. Uh, on the subject of trains and travel, there is ongoing industrial unrest in Spain where hundreds of trains have been cancelled due to a one-day strike by rail workers protesting against privatisation. Uh, the privatisation, of course, is part of the government austerity package. Uh, the government wants to sell off half the country's rail sector and it's likely to affect around 100,000 jobs. So more ongoing unrest in Spain, a country that we're going to need to watch uh, increasingly. Andrew, do you want to tell us about India and uh, the updates we've had from there? Yes, USI held a web conference with our partners Preas uh, with some of the workforce in the brick kiln sector. Indeed, we were humbled by the fact that a worker who was in bonded labour and who was seeking recompense for his wages actually made a distance of 200 kilometres, Walton, to share his experiences with the employer but also with the police force consequently. Really uh, heart-wrenching to hear but really it demonstrates the, the strength of our project because what our project is designed to do is to help build union capacity, to empower workers, to help in bonded labour legal cases but also to train union organisers so the workforce can fight back. And we've been monitoring this situation closely over the last couple of months about the wage rises that the unionisation drive has already achieved and our project seeks to consolidate that. So for £6,200, which isn't a lot of money, our project seeks to benefit 7,000 workers and their families in terms of access to social services. So it was a really fantastic experience for us to actually speak directly with the workers, Walton, and to indeed speak with the union branch secretary, to hear about their excitement about USI's involvement and why we care so much about helping to build union power and f helping them to fight back. So please check that out on our YouTube channel, USI Live 2012, and also other clips on India, and we will be doing more as we go forward. Thanks, Andrew. That's a, a really good story. 
We have been following the case of the Greek steelworkers for some time and indeed we reported on it last week. Uh, there have been some developments since our last report. Do you want to just give us an update on what's happened there? Sure. Our solidarity campaign with Greek trade unions, but it's wider than Greek trade unions, it's with the people of Greece itself, has been going from strength to strength. And we constantly get message from our brothers and sisters there applauding us for highlighting their struggles and their campaigns. And one of the most profile, indeed perhaps the most high profile industrial dispute has been the Hellenic Steelworks, which we've covered in previous weekly updates and of course on our website. As of last weekend, the workers have suspended their strike, a nine month long struggle. They suspended the strike on the condition that the riot police left the workplace and the factory, as we've reported before about how the riot police stormed in a strike breaking move. So the strike is suspended, however that doesn't mean now our solidarity with the workforce is suspended, indeed it should go from strength to strength. We're dealing with a workforce there that is not just in an industrial dispute, but has got the economic and societal chaos which compounds that industrial dispute. and. We will work with trade unions across the world to help build support for the steel workers. Hopefully that will involve financial donations, which the workforce I know will appreciate through our dialogue with them. But it's also about keeping that campaign high in the profile of trade unions across the world because it is an issue that just isn't going to go away. And indeed, as austerity deepens in Greece, as the government has further 11.5 billion euros worth of cuts, these disputes are only going to increase and our focus does not get suspended to the contrary, it only increases. Mm -hmm. Earlier this week we held a web conference with Professor Steve Keane of the University of Western Sydney and it was very successful and very interesting. Professor Keane is the author of Debunking Economics, which is a comprehensive takedown of the foundations of neoclassical economics and the intellectual cult of neoliberalism which has wrecked so much havoc across the world. And uh, we'd really recommend taking a listen to that uh, um, podcast or watching the video we released them earlier and uh, find out what's really happening in the economy and, and look behind some of the lies and uh, spin which is being propagated by the mainstream media about why austerity is necessary. Professor Keane is quite clear to point out that uh, none of these prescriptions work and uh, we need to build a sustainable economy on a very, very different foundation to the one that's being proposed. Andrew, did you think that was a good web conference? It was a brilliant web conference and like our other ones, I must say, really wonderful people as well as having sharp intellectual minds. Steve joined us at half past six in Sydney in the morning to participate. So it was wonderful to have him on, bearing in mind he just had an hour long Radio 4 programme with Paul Mason not that long ago. So it just shows the calibre of people that were drawing towards USI and they see the opportunity of getting their ideas out into a wider audience and we think that that debate should take place and these ideas should be given greater oxygen so thanks goes to Steve and as part of our continual programme of web conferences on economics we are delighted to say that Michael Hudson, another famous economist, has agreed to participate in a future web conference with us. So really exciting that we've got Michael and it's just fantastic that we've been able to attract the caliber of people to participate. And what's been great about it also is that the people participating have really enjoyed it, which is what it's all about. Mm -hmm. And we've had very complimentary comments about the opportunity to speak direct to these people that hitherto they haven't been able to or perhaps never would be able to but because of the technology we are able to provide through Union Solidarity International we are able to put people in touch with very well known and sharp intellectual minds so that we can all together propose an alternative. Thanks Andrew. Anything else this week? No, other than our campaigns go forward from strength to strength in Greece and India but also check out our domestic workers campaign of course 
the coalition government is one of only a few around the world who have refused to endorse the ILO Convention 189. We believe that that is an absolutely scandalous decision by the coalition government in the UK, one of many. But we promise and we endeavour to keep that campaign alive and it shouldn't go off anybody's agenda. So please check that campaign out and check out the information sources, including some of the domestic workers' networks that are out there, to find out about some of the work that they are doing. And we're only too pleased to help give oxygen to the fantastic work that they are doing. And one last thing, Walton, mm -hmm. if, if you don't mind, is that, of course, we have our union and co-op branch affiliation strategy. So if you want your union branch or co-op branch to affiliate to USI, then you can do that via our homepage and just click on join. And please join in the growing conversation with USI, which is involving trade unions across different continents in our world. So get involved and together let's build union solidarity. Thank you, that's all for this week.